So um, what was the recovery process like after you were shot, and how do you feel like you overcame your biggest challenge? Well, the recovery process, especially in regards to how I am a mouth painter now, was a long process that started with a long period after my injury, not knowing whether or not I'd ever be able to paint again. I, I got a dial tone? Hello? Great. Can we try to get her back? I hate that first question, by the way. It's so like I have to bring it around to yeah. melt, make. Just bring it up. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I do. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I have to relate it to painting. Yeah. So I just kind of warp it, but whatever. They can ask me whatever. I'm just going to say whatever. Yeah. What do you want for breakfast? I'll be like, I paint for the MFPA. <laughs> Is she on? Hello. Are you back? I am. Hello. I'm sorry, Ashley? I don't know what happened there. Okay, I can hear you. Can you okay. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfect now. Okay, great. Okay, so again, I'm sorry. What was the recovery process after you were shot, and what do you think your biggest challenge was, and how did you overcome that? Wow, I, I really think that the biggest challenge after my injury was not knowing whether or not I would ever be able to paint again. And, you know, after my injury, I'd lost the use of my hands. And art was so important to me. I'd been an artist my whole life. I was going to school for art, and I had to find a way to have it back in my life. So one of the biggest challenges was trying to find how to have art back in my life. And that came to me in a way when during rehabilitation, an uh, occupational therapist w had to teach me how to write my name. So she told me to try by holding a pen in my mouth. And the first time that I wrote my name with my mouth, I noticed that the signature with my mouth was the same as it once had been with my hand. And at that moment, it was like a light bulb went off on my head and I said, I can apply this to painting. I just might be able to paint this way. And, but you know what, I, I wasn't very good at the beginning and I had to basically start all over. I had started with chicken scratches and stick figures, but I knew that the knowledge of how to paint was inside me and I just had to find a way to bring it out. And so I kept developing myself as a mouth painting artist and I got better all the time. I really think that that was my, my biggest challenge in the beginning. And, and I think sticking with it and staying determined to get better at painting by mouth was how I overcame that challenge. And yeah, like you said earlier, it was art was part of your life um, since you were young, and we'll talk a little bit about that um, with our you know readers. But when you were talking about learning to paint again, and you didn't, the light bulb went off in your head, do you think it's because art was so important to you as you were growing up, and it was something that you just weren't willing to give up on? Well, it's all those things, and also, you know, I was in school. I, I chose a career to be a fine artist. That's a hard thing to let go, but when you have such a life-changing injury and you lose the use of your hands, I had no idea that art could be made in other ways. And so it was art, I, I had to have art in my life. It, I felt like the, the fact that I even had a small potential of being able to paint again, even though it was in this unique way with my mouth, I was gonna keep trying and I was gonna keep learning and getting better because art was so important to me. Being able to express myself was so important to me. Right. And then now, um, what is the mouth and foot painting artist organization and how did you get involved? I know, you know, it happened after your injury, but tell us a little bit about that. Right. The MFPA or the mouth and foot painting artists, like you said, is an association of artists that I belong to and artists that are in the association paint either like I do by holding the brush in their mouth or they paint by feet for whatever reason that prevents them from using their hands. And artists in the association make a living by having our artwork reproduced in a variety of products such as greeting cards and calendars. And really during this time of year, we have a lot of Christmas products that we really like to showcase and that's how we make our living. And I, when I first started painting by mouth, I didn't know that there were other people who painted in this strange, unique way that I do until I met somebody who was an, an artist in the association and they encouraged me to apply for one of the scholarships and I did and um, back in 2005 I got a scholarship 
um, that allowed me to pay for school, art school and other things, and really hone my skill as a mouth painting artist and develop myself. And that's how I found out about the MFPA. And I mean, what a godsend, because nobody thinks that they're going to be a quadriplegic mouth painter when they're young and yet here is this association that was made just for somebody who paints by mouth and it was it 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 allowed me to achieve my goal of becoming a professional artist and still making a living from my art despite my my life-changing disability yeah and like you said um, now you're a quite successful artist so what drove you to achieve this? I know it was your passion. And what kind of advice would you give to anyone else in a similar situation, you know, a life-changing situation, and now they feel a little bit hopeless? Well, I think what helped me achieve the success that I did was my determination and the need to have art in my life um, and, and not giving up, getting discouraged, especially in those first couple of years when things were so hard. I, I didn't paint very well with my mouth, and that was extremely humbling. And, it, it broke my ego in some senses because I knew I was better than that. And it was frustrating that I couldn't just use my hands and do it, but having the need to have art in my life and being determined as I was really was what the key to my success was. And I think that's the advice that I would give other people is to, if you really love something, it's worth working hard for and to not get discouraged by the challenges that face us all. I think people can relate to this. It's not just physical disability or it can, we, we all have challenges in our life. And I think that determination is hard to maintain, but it usually pays off so well in the end. And I'm just so glad that I, I, I kept at it and now can say that I, I love to paint and I, I'm here to share my art with the world and that's such a blessing. Right, and then the holidays, you mentioned that earlier, um, that, that's an important time for members of the MFPA. So if we're out, you know, buying holiday gifts or cards or prints or something like that and we'd like to help your organization, how would we go about finding, you know, the things that you all do? I would love to encourage your audience to go to our website to see all of our unique Christmas products and things that we have to offer. And our website is www.mfpausa.com. And I just like to say it our products have such an added meaning. When somebody gets a card from the MFPA and they turn it over and they they see that it's been painted by the foot or the mouth and that added um, joy that they get from knowing that the the love and the talent that went into the car just makes our products that much more meaningful. Yeah, and then speaking of meaningful, my last question: um, When you you know became a mouth painter and you said you weren't that great at it before, what do you feel like um, from the time of your injury to now was your favorite painting that you've done? What is the most meaningful one to you? I think one of the most mean one of the most meaningful paintings, although it was just a landscape and I did it probably 10 years ago. I think that was a pinnacle point in my developing myself as an artist because that was the first painting that I really felt after all those years that I painted that was as good with my mouth as I once had painted with my hands. And when I realized that I had painted a painting that I felt was that good of quality, it was like me being able to tell myself like, you know what, I made it. I, I did this. I, I was able to do what I set out to do and achieve my goals, and I think that's what makes that painting so special for me. Well, thank you for sharing all that with us, and your story really is humbling. I think our you know readers are going to really love hearing about it. Um, and one more time, where can they go again for more information? Oh, sure. Please uh, go to our website at www.mfpausa.com. All right. Thank you so much again, Miriam. Thank you. Bye.